So today I want to talk about, so first of all, yeah, I'm, I'm Julius, um, the co-founder of Prometheus and founder of Prom Labs, a company that does services and consulting and integration work around Prometheus, um, but also is building its first product right now with Promlens, which I'll also touch on today. Um, so that's for my background. And today I want to talk about the query language that we have in Prometheus. Um, you know, not really give an introduction to it, but more talk about some of the challenges that users have with it, and then how um, a new text editor and the product Promlens try to ease some of those pains. Um, so just taking a step back here, this is the overall Prometheus architecture. Um, the Prometheus server in the middle collects data from your devices and services, and then you can query that data and, uh, you know, doing dashboarding or diagnostics on it or calculate alerts. So today we're going to talk about this part, the PromQL part. And uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, one use case for the data that is collected and for the query language that goes with it is dashboarding. Um, so there you write PromQL expressions to show the overall state of your system to make sure that everything looks healthy. Another use case is for ad hoc diagnostics to just ask a question against your infrastructure at a given moment. Uh, it doesn't need to be part of a dashboard. In this case, for example, I was curious what is in my OneNote Kubernetes cluster, uh, the container type with, uh, or the, the image with the most CPU usage that is deployed and basically sorting all the different image types by their CPU usage. Um, the third use for PromQL is for alerting. And um, alerting rules you configure as a YAML file in Prometheus um, with you know, an alert name and some human readable metadata and routing labels and so on. But the heart of every alerting rule is actually the PromQL expression that I uh, highlighted here. Um, in this case, this is an example alert from the Cube Prometheus project um, to uh, alert when a, a file system is about to run full. So, you know, you want to make sure that these alerts really work because if they don't work, you might have an outage that you're not detecting and you might be losing, in the worst case, millions of dollars and not actually noticing that. So you want to prevent that. So let's just look at an example of PromQL building a query from very simple to more complex and talk about this overall nature of the query without diving too deeply into each individual like query concept. So we might start out just selecting all time series that have a given metric name, in this case, the counter of all HTTP requests. Uh, and this might give us maybe 10,000 different time series with different labels on it. So we decide to scope it down to a particular job, so a set of targets that we're interested in. And since it's a counter, we might not want to actually look at it directly. We want to see how fast it increases. So we kind of look at the last five minutes of each of these return counters. Maybe there are only 1,000 now in, within this job. Um, and then we want to calculate the per second rate averaged over these five minutes. And then maybe, you know, we're constructing our query further. We don't want to actually see 1,000 individual rates. We want to sum them up by the different paths that these HTTP requests happen on. So we add a sum by path around this, um, preserving the path dimension. Maybe now we're only getting back 10 different paths as a result. And now we might want to know what is the ratio of bad 500 requests uh, in comparison to the total requests for every path. And now we're introducing a binary operator here already, making the query even more complex. So binary operations in PromQL are really awesome, but they're also kind of a, a, yeah, a sharp, sharp edge because they do automatic joins between the left side and the right side. They try to find series on the left and the right side that have identical sets of labels. And then in this case, divide those identical elements by each other and propagate that into the result. Um, and that only works if you get the labels exactly right, if the underlying data exactly contains the right labels and so on. And there's modifiers you can apply to these binary operators that you have to get right 
Um, otherwise, you will just get an empty result, for example, or an error. Um, so in this case, for example, I am, uh, so let's get back one second. Here we were just selecting 500 status code uh, requests. And now we want to maybe see the ratio for any bad request that starts with five, but has any other two second digits. So we're changing this condition here, this label matcher on the left-hand side um, to a regex matcher, five something something. Uh, we do have to then preserve the status dimension if we want to have that kind of you know keyed by every status as well. Um, but then the, the binary operator doesn't quite work anymore. We have to tell it, hey, only match on the path label because on the right-hand side, we don't have the status. So we can't match in all labels anymore. But now we have more label cardinality on the left side than on the right side. So we also need a group left um, modifier for this binary operator to tell PromQL, yeah, yes, it's okay. You can give me this result per status code and per path. Um, then we might want to transform these ratios to a percentage, multiply by 100, and then maybe filter it down to just those path and status code combinations that have a larger than 5% error rate. Um, and yeah, so, you know, this expression is exactly the same expression as this one. This is just indented a bit more nicely so that you can actually start to see the nested tree structure that PromQL consists of. And we could indent it even further to uh, reflect the evaluation order. So this operator would actually be the root node of the entire operation. And then it goes down to this, which multiplies it with this and da 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 da. And we could draw this as an evaluation tree. Um, so in the end, PromQL is a language that has arbitrarily deeply nested expressions. Um, the expression evaluation types, they can, eva they can evaluate to a vector like an instant vector, a range vector, a string, or a scalar numeric value. Um, but the types of nodes, they can be aggregations, they can be function calls, they can be binary operations, can be uh, actual selectors of data. Um, and so everything needs to fit together correctly and also fit to the data that you actually have in your underlying Prometheus server for this to work out in the end. So this is easy, right? Um, well, I already suspected that, it, you know, I already knew that it's not always easy, um, but I, I did ask on Twitter end of last year um, what people's biggest frustrations were with both, uh, both for beginners and for advanced Prometheus users. And there were many clusters of answers in the replies about long-term storage, about scalability and some other uh, features. Um, but the biggest cluster of those answers by far was about PromQL. So here you can just see some of the examples. Um, this reaches from just, you know, having trouble with this binary operator vector matching. We had a couple of those, um, this, this one, and this one, and a couple of others. Um, just, you know, surfacing the actual help metadata for metrics in the UI somewhere, um, trying to understand some language concepts and just working with the data and so on. Uh, it just turns out to be a challenge. Um, to make this a bit clearer, let's just hop back to our example that we just had. And let's say we just copy that into a Prometheus server where it's supposed to work on. And in the vanilla Prometheus UI, which I can make fun of because it's built by me as well, um, you only see, okay, this entire expression gives you an empty result. Well, you might be thinking this is totally great because in Prometheus, if an alerting expression, in this case, you know, there's no um, paths with a greater than 5% error rate. If an alerting expression returns an empty result, everything is fine. Um, but you want to make sure that the empty result really is a result of only this filter at the very end and not of something completely different in the query. So what could be possible reasons for an empty result of this query? So, <laughs> for example, you might just be selecting a metric name that doesn't exist, in which case the rate would produce an empty result, in which case the sum would produce an empty result, in which case, you know, the binary operator would create, like wouldn't find any matches, it wouldn't even find series on the left or right hand side. Uh, so you get in total an empty result. 
you might also get the labels wrong, you might get your regex wrong, you might uh, not actually have time series exported with the status 500 or 5xx um, label values yet. Maybe your scrape rate is too large for your rate window that you're supplying. The rate function requires at least two data points under the selected rate window to be able to compute a rate and even output, output a point for a given series. Otherwise, no result for the series. Um, you might also maybe get the actual matching uh, modifiers wrong here. Um, like if you just omitted these modifiers, you would also get an empty result because you have the extra status label on the left-hand side, you don't have it on the right-hand side, you're out of luck and you just get an empty result. And so this is really troublesome, right? Uh, if you're just looking at this at an administrator and you kind of want to make sure that this is actually working correctly, you do get alerted if there's something bad happening, um, then it's not that easy to tell at a first glance. Uh, same thing for errors. If you do input a PromQL expression that is more than completely simple, uh, you might get some kind of weird funky error and you don't know exactly where in this expression is it happening. Um, in this case, you know, I can tell you, um, who actually, I think it's because we have group right instead of group left. Um, but you know, you're wondering which one of these nodes or sub expressions is actually producing the error. What do these different weird syntactical constructs even do and mean? Um, and what data am I working with? Not exactly clear just from this. So, you know, even if you get a query right initially, you do want to make sure over time that it does the right thing. Um, and so you, you do want to, you know, the, the metric names and the labels can actually change over time and you need to be able to understand and verify the query correctness over time. Uh, this is a bit of a tough thing to solve in the completely general case uh, in a system that is not statically typed and compiled uh, where you know you can't automatically check very easily that some metric exported by some python script over here really matches some alerting rules somewhere completely different um, so before talking about the new text editor in promlens i want to give a quick shout out to Grafana's new explore mode. Uh, actually, it's not that new anymore. I think it's about a year old or so. Um, it's a mode in Grafana that already gives you a bit more facilities for constructing and uh, exploring the data in, in Prometheus and PromQL um, and has nice autocomplete features. Um, it doesn't really give you too deep insight into the structure of the query itself yet. There's also the PromQL language server project by Tobias Guggenmoos when he was an intern at Red Hat. And this is great for, I mean, it's still experimental, but you can already install, um, you can install it locally and then you can have Visual Studio Code or Vim or other editors that support the language server protocol and get nice autocomplete inline linting um, and so on. Uh, the downside is that this Microsoft defined language server protocol is great for local editing and not so well suited for a web based editor. But, you know, we do also want to have nice editing functionality like this built into the Prometheus server at some point. So um, this, this is not quite 100% the solution for everything yet. So today I want to talk about two new projects to uh, improve this whole situation. The first is a PromQL text editor with a contextual autocompletion, gives you linting and snippets. This part is actually open source, um, partially like it's a collaboration by me, PromLabs, um, and Augustin from Amadeus. Um, and you can, you can actually look at the source code of that in these two repos that are linked here and contributions are super duper welcome. Uh, so that's already great, but it's not perfect yet. Uh, then PromLens is a commercial product by PromLabs. And this is a query builder, visualizer, and analyzer tool for PromQL that gives you really deep insight into the actual structure of your query. And since PromLens actually includes this new text editor, uh, we will only be looking at PromLens, but Prometheus will in the future soon now also include this cool new text editor. 
So let's only take a look at PromLens. The first thing is the cool new contextual autocomplete. So you do actually get proper autocomplete with snippets and you know, it knows in which positions it's supposed to uh, autocomplete label names, label values, metric names, and so on. Um, then you do get an offline linter that works directly in the editor. Uh, since it's offline, it doesn't have access to the full Prometheus parser, but it has a lightweight offline parser that already detects a lot of common errors. So in this example, it would tell you that you're trying to pass the wrong type into a function. Um, then from lens more broadly, really tries to solve this problem of having, like getting an, an idea of the data and the shape of the data you're working with. So you can plug in any PromQL expression visualize it as the actual tree structure where every node in the tree is one full PromQL expression and its children. Um, and this shows you for each of those nodes, how many results there are, what are the different label names and how many different values do you have for every label name. You can then visualize the actual data as well in a graph and the table for the different nodes. Uh, you can quickly spot where in your query there's actually an error. So you're not guessing any longer with a really complex, uh, even non-syntax highlighted query where this is happening. Um, it explains certain stuff to you in an explain tab. So you can select any node and any type of node and it will try to do its best to explain what is happening here. In this case, um, it is visualizing the actual um, matching between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of a binary operation and also explaining what is happening here. Um, yeah, it can show you the help and type of a metric. Um, later on, hopefully, we can actually visualize that directly in the editor um, and explain functions with the documentation and also aggregators and so on. Um, it includes a full form-based editor for any PromQL node type. So you can actually go into this tree, select any of the nodes, go into this form-based editor mode and just, you know, go wild. So this is great if you maybe have a rough understanding of how PromQL works, but you're maybe a data analyst or just not super familiar with every little syntactical detail of Prometheus, uh, of PromQL. So, all of those details are actually mapped into this form-based editor. But if you're more of a power user, you can also completely just switch any of the inline tree nodes into a PromQL editor with all the features we saw earlier and just change exactly the things you need. And then again, switch out of that inline editing mode and you get back to your modified tree view and just change exactly the, the things you want. Okay. Uh, these were just some features of PromLens. I'm just going to quickly also demo it uh, just to give you a feeling of what it actually looks like um, to use it. Okay, I probably will need to zoom in a bit here for people to be able to see things. This might distort some things, but yeah, that's to be expected. Um, if, if it's really tr uh, hard to read uh, because of the zoom level, please let me know. I'll zoom in further, but otherwise I'll continue like this. So the first thing I want to do is just write the same histogram quantile query three different times. So for example, I want to calculate the quantile, the, the 90th quantile from a given histogram. I could just start out with a snippet and um, start typing it, right? This is one way of doing it. Uh, a different way of doing it is actually to say, go directly into the form-based editor, but go over to snippets and say, hey, I want to calculate the quantile from histogram. And now I get this tree view here with the placeholders. And I can actually just, you know, directly jump into inline PromQL editing if I would like to. I can, you know, navigate with the keyboard in here um, and, uh, you know, select the histogram that I want to um, look at and then it already detects that, hey, you probably want to add a rate because you don't want to look at the histogram over all of its time. So we also add in a rate. So this is the second way to get to the same result. Um, a different way you might start 
might be just to type the histogram you want and then it already it detects okay underscore bucket this is likely going to be a histogram do you want to add this very common structure around it and you get the same thing and you know you could then adjust the labels you see like eh, i actually want to preserve the status label here as well so you're adding that um, and uh yeah and then you're getting the status label as well so this is one thing um a different thing you might want to look at is uh, you can actually share pages. So if I click on this whole link, it will load a page. Um, I, can, I can share this entire page state. Um, I can demonstrate a bit of like drag and drop features and stuff like that. Um, if I now, for example, edit this note inline and I just remove the group left, I will get an error here. And um, yeah, in this case, it's not visualized properly yet, uh, will soon. Um, but if I have like, for example, a group right, where I was supposed to have a group left, um, then I also get some helpful hints for how, like what could possible fixes be. And you know, future also have more action buttons for that here. Um, okay, this is kind of synthetic data. Let's have a look at one realistic-ish example. I have a one node Kubernetes cluster set up with the Prometheus operator deployed using the cube Prometheus JSONnet files. And these include really crazy alerting rules. Um, so <laughs> these are, you know, uh, quite complex already. And those are the kind of use case that PromLens is targeting. So for example, if we're looking at, um, yeah, I guess you can't read this. If we're looking at the uh, file systems on given nodes and whether they're full or not, uh, there's alerts for that. Um, so we could just copy one of those, for example, and look at, um, yeah, if, if, if you just, you know, pay, uh, look for this in Prometheus, and you click on this alert and you know, it's not going, it's not going to be very uh, intelligible. So if we just take this entire thing, we paste it into PromLens. Um, it's also not going to be immediately intelligible, but at least now we can work with it. Um, so in this case, we're seeing zero results everywhere, which is what you would see if you did something completely wrong. In, in my case now, I actually just, uh, I need to choose the right Prometheus server to evaluate this against, and then we will get some results. Um, and now I can, you know, start looking at this and see like, okay, yeah, this actually does return results, but then this filter doesn't. And, um, you know, the predict linear works, but then the filter also doesn't, it filters away stuff. So this is good, da, 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 da. And, um, so this um, makes it very obvious very quickly, which parts of the tree actually don't produce data. And um, I actually had a screen share session with one of my customers uh, where we just went through their alerting rules and we basically copied them all into PromLens. And like, I don't wanna say half, but almost half of them were broken in some way. And so basically my answer for most of them was like, yeah, sorry, like this is never going to alert. Uh, is that what you want? Um, and this is exactly what PromLens uh, is trying to help you with. Um, all right, so that's uh, it for the PromLens demo. And then the last uh, bit is just, you know, please try it out. Uh, either you can try out a you know, preview version at promlens.com. Uh, it has a public repo with the readme, change log and issues where we can discuss. And yeah, there's commercial plans available soon. All right, awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, I already answered one of them in chat. And the preview, um, there will always be a free preview, I think. Um, the difference is uh, that the free preview version uh, will be licensed in such a way that you're only supposed to kind of, it's, it's still in the in flux, but use it with if not millions of time series and maybe only use it for personal reasons. And then uh, if you want to actually use it commercially, there's going to be a license. Um, I'm currently actually working out those details with a lawyer. So um, all that will be online soon. 
Um, but I'm totally happy to just shoot you like a 60 day trial license that unlocks the link sharing, the Grafana data source picker integration and all that. Um, does it work with extended queries rates of rates? Oh, you mean uh, sub queries? Yes, it does. Should at least. Uh, is there uh, anything I missed? Do, 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 do. How much of Promlens functionality will be available in Prometheus? Um, so the editor is the main part, which I really think we have to have in Prometheus. <laughs> um, the rest I cannot currently justify. So uh, Promlabs is just myself and I can't currently justify completely open sourcing it, like having spent that much time building it. Um, somehow I need to um, make a living and eat some bread. <laughs> <laughs>